Let's get started in integrating Fastlane by PayPal. Let me begin by showing you a quick demonstration of Fastlane. I'll start by showing what a guest buyer or guest payer flow will look like. Fastlane first looks up the email provided to see if a Fastlane account exists. So I'll use an email where I know a Fastlane account doesn't exist and show you the typical guest payer flow. I'll type out an email and click on the debit credit card option. And since a Fastlane account was not detected, you'll see the normal card fields. So now we can type out the usual information to pay. I'll fast forward a bit here. Here, the guest buyer will see an option to save their info with Fastlane for faster checkouts in the future. We will attach a phone number for the one-time passwords to be sent, and as simple as that, I'll click Pay Now. This will securely tokenize the raw card information and at the same time create a Fastlane account behind the scenes. Here we are, my receipt. So now this email here, I'll copy it, and now a Fastlane account exists with this email and also tied to the phone number that I gave earlier. I'll refresh the page and change the amount again. Let's pretend I'm on a different merchant website that also uses Fastlane. The point of Fastlane is to accelerate the guest checkout experience irrespective of which website or merchant the account was created at. Now at the checkout page, Fastlane will detect the account with that email typed. Using the Sandbox one-time password or OTP, which is going to be all ones, it retrieves and displays the stored information. All that's left is to click pay now. Success once more. I'm on a shopping spree today, so let's say I buy one last thing or go to another site with Fastlane by PayPal integrated. I'll refresh the page, let's change the checkout amount, and based on internal security rules, the browser may recognize my recent authentication and deem it not necessary to send an OTP. Then it will just pre-fill my information. The last step here will be to just pay now. Success. So Fastlane was built in a way where a customer can access their Fastlane profile, autofill their information, and complete checkout in as little as one click. For shoppers that are recognized by Fastlane and use Fastlane, we want to make it easy as one click. For those who don't yet have the ability to autofill their details with Fastlane, we want to ensure that when they do create a Fastlane account for future use, that their information is accurate. To enable Fastlane on your existing PayPal REST app, log into the PayPal developer portal and in the apps and credentials section, open the details of the app that you are using and scroll down to the features section and make sure that Fastlane toggle is on if not already enabled. In production, you'll need to apply and be approved for this advanced debit and credit card processing for Fastlane to work. In Sandbox, it should either be auto-enabled or if you have an older or existing REST app, simply enable it and click save. And that's it for the pre-setup with your PayPal REST app. Now let's go through the code. The Fastlane integration is easy to add in addition to your already existing PayPal implementation. I'll explain that in this video. Let's take a look at this mock website here. As you can see, it's just a play on those buy me a coffee sites where you can send a few bucks to, you know, a content creator, artist that you follow, or maybe purchase courses or downloads. My example here is paying for a digital service, or maybe it could be to obtain access to a newsletter or Discord server or something, right? But I also will be showing in the code how this will work with physical items and how it will work to include shipping addresses. Let's open up the project files. This is a Node.js project, but don't fret, most of it is front-end implementation with only a few API calls on the server that can easily be recreated in your programming language with our REST APIs, and I will explain that. You have an index file here, the API.js file is the server endpoints, and the script.js is the front-end JavaScript that's visible to the browser. For the environment variables, add your PayPal client ID, your secret, you'll You'll need a comma separated list of domain names listed here on which sites you will use the access token. You will also need to replace and add your client ID, the same one here, to the browser script file as it's needed to load the script tag. To start, we normally load the PayPal script tag on the HTML page, but before we can do that, we need to first generate an access token that is scoped for Fastlane, along with passing the list of domains in that access token API call. Let's open our API.js file, which is our server-side routes and methods. Here I have what you would typically have as a route to simply generate an access token and provide it to the client. To make that work with Fastlane, I've cloned this same function and named it Fastlane underscore auth. You can see the first two lines are exactly the same but now we use the resulting access token to run this REST API call that looks almost identical to the standard call to generate an access token, but we have these new parameters here, as well as we're passing the domain names here. It's grabbing this from the environment variables. We grab the new resulting access token and pass that to the browser. Switching over to our script.js file, which are all the methods on the browser, we see that the first thing that happens is a network call is made to grab the Fastlane access token, where previously you may have had a regular auth call here, you can 
upgrade it just as simple as I demonstrated on the server side file. Once we have that response, this init PayPal script tag method runs and begins the chain of events. Let's take a look at that here. Here's the location of the client ID that you must replace with yours combined with the access token from the server. We can build a script tag with the Fastlane component also included in the components list and append all this to the document head. Once that loads, both the PayPal and Fastlane SDK have completed loading and we can run the methods. I won't go over these PayPal methods here, but they simply render the PayPal and Venmo buttons. You can always adjust that. Let's look into what the Fastlane methods are doing. We will isolate the Fastlane object here, which is just a collection of Fastlane specific functions. Here we display the Fastlane watermark so that the customers are aware of the service and can click on the info icon for more information. On my mock website, I have a loading graphic that I make disappear and then display the email field and the card buttons with this function here. It's just a helper function. We will add an event listener to the email input for Fastlane's authentication lookup and a one-time event listener for the debit credit card button to render and display the card fields. This button just saves vertical space on the page. You can choose to display the card fields initially or trigger the display or even trigger the fast lane lookup only when a button is clicked. That's your preference. To make the fields display, we provide you a few styling options that you can adjust here. If you've already collected shipping from your customer on a previous page or earlier, then you can go ahead and pass that shipping info here in this code that I have commented out. It's as easy as including it into the config object and pass it to the Fastlane component function and render it here. Quick note, this video guide is demoing the quick start integration for Fastlane, which has the card fields, billing fields, as well as billing input validation and the user interface for displaying the stored card and changing that information already out of the box. You can opt for the flexible Fastlane integration that's also outlined in our docs. That integration will still provide you with secure card forms, but you can take care of the billing input fields and you will have to build the graphics for displaying store cards to your users if they authenticate with Fastlane. If you have shipping in your website, you can use these methods, which are currently unused in my project files, but you would call this function in a button click event listener or anything of that sort, and it would display the shipping address change modal that we provide or the card selector modal that you can decide what happens if they change their address or card. Our JavaScript payloads will provide you with the necessary info, but you would then have to build that out for the flexible integration. Or you could use the quick start integration and it will work as you saw in the demo earlier. Once the fields are rendered, I have this setup payment handler, which all it does is adds the proper event listener to submit the payment. If a guest payer is detected, whatever was filled out in the Fastlane forms, we want to tokenize it into a single use token. And with that, we can process the payment on the server. If this is not a guest user, but this is a Fastlane user that passed authentication, then no need to tokenize anything since the user will not type out their card number, but we will simply give you the user profile data to use. To process the user User info, we are simply grabbing the data from this variable, which I named profile underscore data and sending it to be processed. Taking a step back, when the user types out their email address, we are doing a simple email validation first to ensure it's a valid email string before we even call the Fastlane lookup method. Here is the Fastlane lookup method. The responses are stored in a variable, and if there is a user matching, then we can handle it as an existing Fastlane user. Otherwise, we can treat this as a guest payer. For existing users, we want to tell Fastlane to authenticate them. If it's deemed by Fastlane that they need a one-time password in OTP, then they'll get that OTP. Otherwise, if the user is already authenticated or passes authentication, we will get a succeeded message here. And this is where that profile data gets stored. It's in this variable, which is accessible to all of these methods. If they don't pass authentication or cancel out the auth window, we can still treat them as a guest payer and load the regular car fields for them to pay. In my project, I don't do much here. I just set this as a marker that this is in fact a guest payer but you can add your own actions here as well. Lastly, for the front end code, we can process the payment by sending the single use token to the server for processing in our orders API. Here I have set my own identifiers to know if this is a card payment that the user clicked on or if it's PayPal or Venmo, for example. Then I send that to the server also along with an order ID. In the fetch body call, you really only need the amount and the single use token, but of course pass any and all other data that's relevant to your website's use case. Once I get a transaction ID, back, I display the receipt. The next method is to load the PayPal buttons, but we won't go over those much. And then below that are the rest of the helper methods or just UI methods outside of Fastlane functionality. 
Since Fastlane could be a one-click payment, one important difference from PayPal payments is that it only uses the Create Order API call at the moment to both initiate as well as finalize that payment. With PayPal, the Create Order API call runs first, then the PayPal pop-up appears for the user to log in and approve the payment. Once the pop-up closes and the order ID is approved, another final API call is needed to either capture or authorize that payment, creating a transaction record with a transaction ID. With Fastlane, there is no second API call. The very first create order API call, the same one that you may use for PayPal with slight adjustments to pass that single use token, creates the order as well as captures the order all in one API call. That means that your API call response for Fastlane will include the transaction ID and the rest of the normal API responses for a finalized payment. Let's conclude this video by taking a peek of what I just explained in the server side calls, starting with the handle card order. I run the function that will use PayPal's create order API call and I'm passing in the arguments, the amount, payment source, card in this route, the single use token, and shipping if there is one. Going down to the create order route, this one is used if they click on the PayPal button. You can see no single use token is passed, but both scenarios use the same create order API call. For PayPal and Venmo and other alternative payment methods, you will need to call the second API call to complete the payment and get a transaction ID in the results and then pass that to the browser to display the receipt. In the PayPal create order API call, you can see my base or foundational purchase info that I start with here, the amount passed from the browser, the line items. You'll see in our REST API doc reference, these are optional. You can adjust these to anything or remove them. Depending if a shipping address is actually passed, it's determined if it's a physical product or not. Again, you can just override my demo code here and always make it one or the other. Again, if shipping info is passed, then more info gets appended to the purchase unit object. Ideally, these shipping details would come from your server or changed to your options given here and not leave these placeholder values. So make sure that you adjust this. We set the payment source details here as a part of this order. If we know that this is a card payment, then we must pass that single use token so that PayPal knows which card data to charge. And you can set the card statement descriptor here as well. And lastly, we create that order. If this create order happens to be a card payment using Fastlane, then this is the last or final API call that you will make. You will be given the transaction information in that response. If this was not a card payment and no single use token was passed, then you will be given in return an order ID that you can return to the browser for your PayPal or Venmo payments and go from there as per usual with your user approval and final capture API call later on. These functions culminate into the experience that I demoed at the beginning of the video where you can offer your guest users an accelerated checkout flow. We have now successfully integrated Fastlane by PayPal using the PayPal integration.